Hey everyone, it's Norm from Testin. I have a really fun and simple how-to for you today for anyone out there who might be making your own videos or doing live streams or anyone who wants to share their work or design process or even teachers in this work and teach from and learn from home period of this lockdown. Uh, while at home myself, I've been working on a bunch of projects and as part of the first step of the process, I do some sketching and some light design work and in making videos about it, I've struggled with finding ways to share that part of the ideation process with you out there. I mean, I could literally hold up my notebook with some sketches or maybe use a camera and do an insert uh, picture in picture to show the drawing of those designs. Uh, but I'm wondering, is there a way uh, to actually make better use of this frame, this window that you're watching this video in right now to literally illustrate uh, the design process? And I haven't seen anyone do this yet, but it turns out it is possible. So for example, if I was wanted to show uh, a simple cube or a sphere, I can literally do that right now, right on screen and draw a cube or a sphere or I can annotate on screen and let's show you for example that's a camera right now that's being used to shoot this b-roll and that's my computer in the back and that's my head right there and all this is happening actually in real time uh, using my iPad. Um, and the awesome part is that if you have the basic hardware that's needed, so a webcam or camera, a computer to connect it to that you'd be using for your Zoom conferences anyway, uh, and a tablet, um, for example, here I'm just using an iPad with an Apple Pencil, the software to make this on-screen annotation in real time work is actually, yes, free. So I'm going to walk you through that process and hopefully you'll be able to take advantage of it. Let's get started. So conceptually, the way this works is actually really simple. It's using the same type of compositing, video compositing technology that Twitch live streamers use to put on screen elements like a HUD element uh, as they're doing their live stream. And that's used primarily with uh, OBS Studio, a free piece of software that you can download uh, for Windows or Mac. Uh, now this video that you're watching right now is not being recorded directly on my camera, my DSLR. It's actually being piped through onto a computer. So the first piece of technology you need is, of course, your camera. It can be a webcam, it can be a DSLR, as long as you can do live video output. Uh, and there are a bunch of different options. If you have a Canon camera or a Sony camera, I'm using a Canon camera with their uh, webcam utility beta. And that over a USB cable is then being piped into this computer. So here in OBS Studio, I've created a new scene and our first video source is gonna be uh, the webcam or my DSLR. And there it goes, it's my video capture device. Uh, latency is all right. It's not full resolution through this piece of software, but it's good enough for this purpose. Now, uh, typically if you're doing a Twitch stream and you wanted UI elements or game capture, you would add those as well. Uh, or if you had a green screen, you can actually add filters to any of your video sources uh, to um, then add a chroma key. But instead of a green screen being behind me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have uh, a, an element, a video element in front of this video, this webcam video with its own transparency layer. And that is gonna come in the form of my iPad. So there are a bunch of ways you can capture your iOS device, your iPad or iPhone and put it into your computer. Uh, most of those you have to pay for, uh, but there are trial versions that will still work for free for this process. And the one I'm using is called A Power Mirror, works on uh, Windows here. Um, and it lets you mirror video and audio, do some development work, import images and files you have from your iOS device. And we're just gonna download that and install it. Now, after that's installed, I have it actually connected up here and you see basically this is my iPad in real time uh, and the latency is 
pretty good. And you'll notice that the on-screen capture has a watermark and typically you wouldn't want that, but actually that doesn't matter in this case because the watermark is, uh, is this grayscale color that actually fades away with the, the transparency. Um, so I can import this capture, this iPad screen, onto OBS by adding it as a video source. Here it's just a window capture, and I will then select uh, a power mirror, and there it goes. So I have my iPad on OBS. Um, right now I, I would stretch it so it's a little bigger right here. And it's a layer on top of my video feed. So I can swap the order of those layers. Right now I would be, the webcam is on top of the iPad, but I will actually want the iPad image on top of the webcam videos. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, the drawing application I'm gonna use is uh, Adobe Fresco, it's also uh, free. And here you see Adobe Fresco on my iPad that's now being captured uh, on uh, OBS. And it's not translucent, I gotta create that alpha channel. So to do that, uh, actually I just go into Photoshop and create a new artboard, uh, and I just wanted to create a green screen image. So green is gonna be my uh, alpha channel color and I can very simply, under RGB, go zero for red, 255 for green, zero for blue, create that color, and then create a wash, a paint bucket wash of green, uh, and then just save that as if it was a photo. So this image gets saved, it's, I email it to myself, download it on the iPad, and I load it into Adobe fresco and here i have my background um, and i have an image layer and i've already actually incorporated it and there it goes so green is now on the background of what i want to draw on it's an adobe fresco as well as mirrored on obs right here it's green and green so i just right click on this window capture and click filters. And from here you can add your chroma key fields filters. There's a plus bot button on the bottom left. Click that. You have a bunch of options from LUTs to color correction to image mass, but I'm gonna select chroma key right here and create a name for it. Uh, green is the default. You can try blue, magenta, or a custom color. Uh, custom, if I just want to use green, it's again zero, two, five, five, zero, make sure max value for green. And you can already see it looks gray here. Uh, whereas if we go to a power mirror, it's still capturing this green image, right? The green of my iPad is still being mirrored onto the computer, but when uh, processed through the filter in OBS, it looks actually just translucent. Uh, and you can do some adjustments in terms of uh, the, the keying for the smoothness and the aliasing of the edges, you know, tweak to your content. Uh, but if we close that, you can now see that I actually have the Adobe Fresco UI on top of uh, my webcam capture. And I'm just gonna move that around a little bit. You can scale that up so it gets hidden away on the edges. And now it looks like I have a clean image right here of the webcam when in fact on top of that I actually have this mirrored image of the iPad capture and it still is green here I just choose my brush I choose a color uh, white is fine for here and then I can start I'm gonna draw a layer drawing in real time and there you go you can see the latency is relatively low. You have to do a little bit of uh, futzing for the framing, um, but it's super easy to delete layers, add layers, and draw whatever you need. So it's a really quick, easy, and free way to do some literal on-screen 
annotating, and uh, hopefully it will be useful to you. I'll be incorporating this into future videos. The thing I have to work out is how to draw while also looking at the camera, but uh, that's just going to be some practice. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have questions about this process, if something uh, may not be working for you, post in the comments below. I'll try to chime in and help. And if it does work for you, let me know as well. Hope that's been helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye.